Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. In today's session, we'll understand how exactly we can send an email from Apex. You might have came across a scenario where you have an option to send an email alert from your workflow rule process builder and flows. But what if you have written a code where you need to send an email? How do you do it? A typical example for this one is you have written a batch class where in the finish method, you need to send an email alert to the person who has submitted the batch saying that the batch has been completed and you need to update the status. So in this scenario, you cannot go ahead and use an email alert, but you have to write a Apex code to send an email alert. So in such scenarios, how do you do it? So in this class, we'll explore how can we do that with the help of a simple example, which would demonstrate the working scenario where you can send an email alert to the interested parties who should be receiving that email. Without any delay, let's get started. I'm quickly switching to my Salesforce org. Now, again, I'll make use of my anonymous window to write that code. You can always make use of a new UI that you can build where you can submit the same job with the help of your Visual Force page or your LWC comp. For time being, we'll stick to the anonymous window for us to understand the concept better. Once you have mastered it, you can combine with the other UI topics where you can link this code and call it from the place where you wanted to execute the same process. This is our requirement where we wanted to send an email alert to the contact that is there in the system or a user. Now, for us to achieve this one, let's think in terms of what we need and then we look out for the options that we need to use. The first thing that we need to know is the two address to send an email what are the things that we would need? We'll start from there and we'll get to know what are the options that the Salesforce is providing us. The first thing that we would need is to whom we wanted to send that. So the answer is, what is the two address? So once you know the two address, what do you want to convey to the person who is receiving the team? You can convey the information in a single line using your subject and you can convey the entire context of that subject using your body. So that means there are two things that we need to set. One is the subject, we give the gist of what exactly the email is and the body, which would be an elaborate explanation of what the subject meant. We need two address, subject and body. So these are the basic information that you would be setting when you're sending an email. At times you have to set the CC address and you can also set the BCC. These are all optional, but these are the information that you can set. If I go ahead and open any email account. So if you see here, what are the points that you have discussed are the same things that you need to set. To address CC, BCC, which are optional. CC and BCC are optional. Subject is something that you need to set and the board. So once done, you need to hit the send button. In order for us to understand this one, think of this from the UI level. And accordingly, you can search for the information you can look for options. How do you set it from the Apex level? Now, since we know what we are trying to do, now let's explore how to do it. So now we are starting with the actual ask. In order to do this from our Apex, Salesforce has given us a class called single email message. So how can you use that? So we can use of the messaging and call that single email message class. So we are making use of the single email message for us to send this email out. So in your single email message, you would be mentioning these pointers, which we have talked about so far. So once you do that, there is a process of clicking on the send button. As of now, we have not looked at how can we click on the send button from the UI standpoint. But what we are trying to do is we are trying to populate this information, which is to subject and body. Let's complete that and then look out for an option how to send that email that we have created in this anonymous window. So I'll name this as message is equals new since it is a class. Let's go ahead and instantiate it. So we have done the first part. Now what we need to do, we need to populate this information. How do you populate this information? Once you have created the instance, we need to look for methods that can help us set this information. So where can you get this method? If you search for the documentation single email message method, there you'll get the detailed information on what all methods that are available. 
So what am I interested in? I'm interested in setting the two address. If you see the method call set two address, what does it takes? It takes a list of email address or object IDs of the contact or leads or users. So you can go ahead and mention the list of email addresses that you want to send, or you can set the contacts IDs or lead IDs or user IDs, depending on what exactly you wanted to do, you can go ahead and set that information here. Now what I'll do, I'll go ahead and take this method because that is what I'm interested in. So I'll copy that method, paste it here. What is the information that I need to pass here? I need to pass in the email address to which I want to receive that email. So this is the email address that I want to send to. And what is the next thing that we need to do? We need to set the subject. Again, in order to understand how we need to set the subject, let's go to this methods and look for a method that is available. So if you see here, we have a subject that we can set using the set method and make use of our variable dot. Just for a testing purpose, I'm giving the subject as what exactly we're trying to do. What is the next thing? We need to set the body. So body is nothing but the content that help us explain what exactly this email is all about. So you have two options. Either you can set it using your HTML body, or you can use your HTML tags, or there is another option that is given to us, which is plain text body. How is this two methods different? In your HTML body, you can pass your HTML tags. In your set plain text body, it's a simple plain text that you can make use of. So what I'll do, I'll use the simple plain text. Feel free to give it a try and see how the HTML would work from your end. So we have set the body as well. If you want to set the CC and BCC, you can go ahead and do that also. This is a method that you can make use of where you can set the CC and BCC. Again, you can mention the email address that you wanted to CC, or you can do that in the contacts and leads or the user level. So let's go ahead and set this also. Since I've already set this email as a text here, let's look at if you have an option to set this for a user. I'm just going to the user object to find an ID. So I have a test user for which an email address is there. So I'll grab this ID to see if you're able to send an email to this address when it is marked in CC. So I'll just pass this ID. You can either do it this way or you can just pass the user IDs to this CC. If I go ahead and compare what I've written and with the syntax that I see on the screen, this method is accepting array of strings. But what I have passed, I've passed it as a string. So if I execute this code, it would give me an error. So what we need to do, we need to fix this one. How do we fix it? Since this method is accepting a list of string, so what I'll do, I'll just change this code a little, saying that instead of directly sending a single value, I'm sending you a list of strings. Now how is that helpful? Let's say you have another email address that you wanted to send. What you can do, you can put a comma and start writing your email address that you wanted to send along with this email. Do the same thing here also because it is a list that we are sending. So instead of writing directly this way, which would throw an error, simply change it to an array. So if you see here, whatever that we have discussed above is done. Now what is the last piece that is pending? Clicking on the send button. How do we do it? Again, take the help of messaging. Simply write messaging dot send email. So if you look at this point, so it is expecting a messaging dot send email as a value. That means, so whatever that we have set here, so whatever that we have created here is one instance of an email. So what if you have to send a bunch of email at once? That is where you can make use of the list operation. So what I can do, I can create a list for this email message and pass that to this sending. So we are clubbing multiple emails at once and sending it using this send email. So what I would do, I'll go ahead and pass this variable that we have created so far, which is this one. In short, what we have done, this is your preparing your email. 
which contains all your body, subject, to address, and your CC. This part is sending an email. So just like the bulkification logic, you would not send a sing single email message, but you would combine that into a list and send it at once. So these are the two steps that you need to follow. First, prepare your email message using your single email message class and the methods that are available. And once done, use your send email logic. Now, it's time for us to test this logic. Select the code and click on execute highlighted. And if you see here, it is throwing us an error saying that set to address does not exist. So there are like minor changes that we need to do. If you see this method, set to address is expecting a list of strings. So that is why I've made that change here. So that way we can avoid that error, right? So always look at the documentation to see what exactly you need to pass. Instead of assigning it as a variable, I've just set it as a method. Now let's do this execution one second and see if there are any errors that we would get. So now this time we are not seeing any errors. We are able to successfully execute that logic. Now what is the next thing that we need to do? The next thing that we need to do is validate if the email has been sent to the email address that I've mentioned earlier. So let's go ahead and check that out. So if you see here, I was able to get an email to the email address that I've mentioned. And it talks about the body that I've set, which is coming from here. This is the plain text body. And this is the subject that we have mentioned earlier. So is the subject matching? Send an email from Apex it is also matching. So this is how you can make use of the single email message logic where you can send an email from your Apex. So you can add multiple people to the two address, just like how we did. So if you see, these are the two people that I'm sending an email to, and this is the CC address that I've at mentioned, All right? So this information is coming from where? It is coming from this section where I've set this value of the user. In this set to address, I've mentioned the email addresses directly, whereas in the CC, I've mentioned it in the form of an ID. Feel free to explore the other methods that are available in case if you wanted to explore other methods. Feel free to check out this documentation, which I'll leave a link in the description. And in case if you're in doubt, feel free to try this out in your anonymous window to see how it works. In case if you get an error just like how I did, always explore the options of checking the documentation to see how exactly you need to pass the parameters. Just to give you an essence of how we would debug, I've just made some changes while we are on the go to help you understand how we would correct the errors that you would see when you face, face them while you are writing your code. That is the end of the video. Hope you have liked it. Make use of the single email message wherever the requirement demands you to send an email from your Apex. That is all for this video. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe to SFTC Quest.